Welcome to The Nonprofit Show. We are so glad you're here with us today. We're also extremely honored to have Jeffrey Wilcox back. Jeffrey is the CEO at Third Sector Company, and he's here to talk about the state of the interim profession. So stay with us because again, Jeffrey has a lot to cover uh, in this short amount of time, as well as an invitation for you coming up throughout this conversation. So again, to remind you who we are, if we haven't met you yet, Julia Patrick is here. She serves as the CEO for the American Nonprofit Academy. And I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, CEO of the Raven Group. And again, Honored to be here, Julia, day in, day out, to have these thought leader conversations with so many amazing experts in our sector. We also want to give our gratitude to our amazing presenting sponsors. They're the ones that keep us going. And so we're so very honored to have the support of Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Many of these companies have been with us since March of 2020, helped us produce over 800 episodes, bringing in diversity and so many different perspectives into the conversation. So if you missed any of the episodes, guess what? You can find us on many different streaming platforms, podcasts, broadcasts, and the latest and greatest is you can download the app. So go ahead and pull out your smartphone, scan that QR. Thank you, Vanna White, who has joined us today, Julia Patrick, and scan that QR code. You know, I always like to say this. She's from my hometown of South Carolina, like not my town town, but she's home state, I should say. So, so Vanna White is from South Carolina. But okay. yes, go ahead and scan the QR code and you can, um, in just a few hours after today's live conversation with Jeffrey, you'll get a notification that the recording is ready for your pleasure. So without further ado, Jeffrey, you've waited so patiently. I want to, <laughs> want to remind all of our viewers and listeners who you are again. So Jeffrey R. Wilcox, CFRE, CEO at Third Sector Company. Welcome back, my friend. It is, it's like coming home. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell us a little bit, Jeffrey, uh, start us off, you know, briefly tell us a little bit about the third sector and a little bit about yourself, because you're going to talk to us about the state of the interim profession. And again, provide that invitation to all of our viewers and listeners today. Would you would you let us know a little bit about yourself and the company? Happy to do that. Always difficult to talk about oneself, but I'm very proud of all the people who make up third sector company. You know, I spent about 20 years with United Ways in three cities across this country. And I saw firsthand how executive transitions were costing charitable dollars, costing goodwill, costing community trust, because they weren't done well. And there was one thing I learned, Jared, about this work. There's one thing that no funder can write a check for, and that is human assets and human talent. It's the human capital that built our sector. And so I started Third Sector Company because it was great to raise money and distribute it. But my role was to help to cultivate the talent that was necessary for great people to do great things in this country. And Third Sector Company was born. Mission statement to help foster leadership continuity for organizations, congregations and associations. And I love it. Well, you know, I think it's an amazing that you're on the inside throughout your entire career you get to see this ecosystem, and then you really lean in and do something that's quite innovative and, and very different. And so let's start out by going back a little bit and having you really clarify this concept of interim leadership and, dare I say, interim management. Talk oh. to us about that. <laughs> I love how you worded the question because there is a huge difference between the individual who chooses to do interim management and the individual who chooses to provide interim leadership. This is more than just a, a, a casual play on words. You know, Julia, for the longest time, interim management was kind of the substitute teacher, watering the plants, bringing in the newspaper, making sure the dog was fed. Um, and I, I don't mean to belittle that, but the fact of the matter is it left so much possibility on the table. And what interim leadership really does is it helps a group of ordinary people to figure out what they want to accomplish in an extraordinary way. And from that conversation, the new kind of leader will emerge. 
what interim leadership does is guarantees operational excellence while operational excellence while helping an organization to move from what they want in their next leader to having consensus on what they need in their next leader. And I will tell you that goes across the gamut of organizations because they're also different because of people and, and purpose and, and location. But I will tell you, interim leadership is methodical and it's transformational and it's profound. And that's why I get up every morning so excited to have the job I have. Yeah. Well, and it's strategic. And that's what I love to share too. And full transparency, you know, I started serving as an interim leader well before I met you, Jeffrey. And then I, I took, you know, the third sector academy course, really got like so many additional tools in my toolbox. Um, and I brag about the certificate all the time, really wow. love it. But I really do like to advocate to say just what you said, we're not coming in as substitute teachers. We're not coming in as babysitters. We're coming in as change agents, right? And in really in a strategic manner. And so I love that you really have just dedicated your career and your passion to this advocacy work. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. <laughs> You know, and, and what's been great is when you see the results of interim leadership, you have organizations that are feeling a sense of alignment. And I can guarantee you probably what brought the interim into the organization was a tremendous sense of not being in alignment. And it's that aligning process and walking away and knowing that you've left a group of people focused on finding higher ground in their service to others will give you a level of satisfaction that I dare say most careers cannot. Yeah. yeah. Well, you talk about these 10 main interim leaderships in the sector. Would you tell us what these 10 main interim relationships are? Yeah, you know, when we started in this business, I think most, most folks, it's going back 20 years. Yes, I was six years old, but it's going back 20 years. And, and it was, you know, pretty much a person voluntarily or involuntarily left their executive director position and there was an interim needed until um, uh, a successor had been found. Okay, well, that, that was kind of the, the, the interim relationship. But we also found out that, you know, there are people who voluntarily and involuntarily left who were founders and that kind of added a different spin to everything because it's like if they leave, does the whole organization leave? So let me answer your question directly. What we've discovered in 21 years of doing this is this is not a one size fits all. And the good news is the public and private sectors have finally caught on to something we've known in the nonprofit sector for, I don't know, about 400 years. When, when we invented this thing called uh, interim pastors in the, in the religious communities. Mm -hmm. But now you open up the newspaper and you see the interim university president. You see the, the interim... Uh, you know, chief executive officer of Starbucks. I mean, you, now the people who sit on boards are starting to go into their own workplaces and recognize that their workplaces are being positively impacted by interims, and so can our nonprofits. That's led to a variety of relationships. Here's a few just to try on. Number one, we recommend that organizations who've never had an executive to have an interim first. The truth is that first hire is probably going to be an interim while everybody tries to get used to having a first time ED. Yeah. So there's the first time. There's also the last time an organization who has fulfilled its mission is no longer viable. And so you need an interim who actually is experienced in, in sunsetting a nonprofit. And that's a, that's a very defined skill set. But wait, there's more. There's also the organizations today that are amalgamating and consolidating and are choosing an interim as their first merged um, situation. So people need to be experienced in mergers and acquisitions. I, I got to tell you, we love seeing that in the sector, but it requires a skill set yeah. that, that we're going to bring people who've never worked together into community for the first time. Mm -hmm. A couple more. We didn't know this one. We, we got a letter from, from the courts asking if we would provide an interim because a nonprofit had filed for bankruptcy. And today we have interims who are actually um, considered expert witnesses in testimonials to courts, whether an organization can come out of bankruptcy or not, and to file a strategy with the court to, you know, be a chapter seven versus a chapter 11. 
We've got interims who are actually interim COOs. Now, everybody on the screen knows there's a lot of execs who probably should learn to work with what we'll call a, a partner in the workplace, but they have this inability to get a, a second in command, if you will. So we now have interim chief operating officers, which allows two execs to work together to test a, a, a position that really needs to be in place. Another one, the virtual interim. You know, today there can be a Boys and Girls Club in rural South Dakota that definitely needs an interim executive because those children, that's the only place they have in that small community. Mm -hmm. You know what? They don't have any interims in that small community. So we have another kind of relationship. It's virtual and remote. Julia, you can sit in Phoenix with all of your expertise and help a small community in South Dakota operate a Boys and Girls Club so those children, those young people have a place to go and you still are in Arizona while you do it. The virtual and remote interim is the way of the future. And then the last one. Um, I got to tell you, as a purist, we don't like this, but you go with the marketplace, everybody. It's called the temp to perm. There are some organizations who, quite frankly, have not been good employers and they keep scratching their head going, why can't we keep anybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're encouraging them to do in terms of what works out, that may be a permanent solution they should embrace because they've just had a revolving door. There's your 10. Look at the variety. It's not a one size fits all. And I love that you mentioned that, right? That it's not a one size fits all. And I can only take on so many interims at one given time, but I love really educating people on these opportunities and looking at the possibilities of what that looks like. You know, so thank you for these 10. Thank you for sharing, you know, the gamut of what that yeah. could possibly look like. But let's go now into the demographics, right? Like what's the demographics of perhaps these 10 different, you know, opportunities and relationships, what are you seeing when it comes to an interim leader? Well, Jed, just by virtue of your interest in this profession and the personification of who you are, uh, just having you on the screen really speaks to the trend we're seeing in demographics towards interim leadership. And, you know, I applaud you. I'm thrilled to work with you. I'm thrilled to know you because you represent the kind of interim leader of today and tomorrow. When I began in this business, the truth is, for most individuals, the demographic was in the mid-60s or later. This was what was called at that time the encore career. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that, and that was actually the operative word. Uh, interim leadership became an encore career. National organizations found it as a great way for retirees within their system to be redeployed to uh, executive vacancies elsewhere in their system. So all of a sudden, I'd been the executive of an organization in Cincinnati for years, and I got to go to Phoenix for three months of the winter. Nothing wrong with that. And so that was kind of the, the, the demographic. Now that's changing, and thankfully so that it's more diverse. Yeah. Number one, the average age is lowering because we have a better sense of a work-life balance. Mm -hmm. And depending on an individual's um, personal state, Interim executive leadership provides more of a work-life balance than working 90 hours per week for a single not-for-profit organization, which for a lot of people is not only a job, is a calling, and thank goodness for that. Right. But for a number of people, um, the work-life balance is more what they are looking for. Mm -hmm. Another demographic that we're seeing, too, is um, people are coming from other sectors than just the nonprofit sector. Interesting. This was... Uh, usually just someone who had been a current nonprofit person. Now this is someone who's like been a volunteer for a long time. They really want to do something in the nonprofit sector. And so they, they uh, look at interim work, but we've still got some work to, to do because interim leadership by nature is episodic. And we need to make sure that we are encouraging persons, particularly persons of color and persons of lower income to, to be welcomed into this profession knowing full well of the economic needs that they have, but yet their lived experiences and the questions they ask is the kind of leadership these organizations need to form a bridge between their past and their future. Jeffrey, let me ask you this question. Do you feel like an interim can come from, like say um, the cultural you know, sector of our nonprofit space and then move into say animal welfare or domestic violence? I mean, or do you feel like these interims need to really 
be within a certain category. We always say there are nine main categories, you know, across the nonprofit sector. What are your thoughts on this? Oh, Julia, I have very strong thoughts about this. Organizations that are in transition will really benefit from a person who brings a different perspective. Okay. Their perspective is going to add to the richness of the conversation. And the other thing is their questions, because they're not embedded within a particular industry, are asking questions others may be afraid or embarrassed to ask, but they need to be asked. Interesting. So I'll give you a perfect example. We had someone who had been a career early childhood development person that became an interim at a botanical center. It was the best thing they ever did. They couldn't identify a plant in their own garden. But the fact of the matter was they went into this botanical center and they asked all the right questions about activities and keeping people involved, um, family versus individual activities. The Botanical <laughs> Center flourished under this childcare, this preschool, early childhood education professional. But there is, I mean, another dad joke as we talked about this in the green room chatter. <laughs> They've got the nursery as their baseline, right? Like, <laughs> good, good job. job. Yeah. Good job. Um, well, I have strong feelings too, Jeffrey, and they are in alignment with yours. And that is definitely something that I, I do, you know, brag about as well, is that seeing it from a different perspective, asking the questions that were not so baked in the jargon and the lexicon of the of that work. Yeah, I yes. really do think that, you know, during this time, Julia, it does provide that opportunity for an even higher strategic movement, right? Like really pulling back to say, okay, why do we do it this way? Why do we call it that? Why, you know, why has this always been our process? Might we consider something else? And so what Jeffrey had just shared is really, you know, I see it as an advantage. Mm -hmm. You know, Julia, we've proudly, we have uh, helped to facilitate over 400 interim engagements in our, in our careers. I want to go back to the very first one to illustrate your point. Our very first placement was, was at a local community LGBTQ center. They were looking for, obviously, an interim executive director at a time 20 years ago when AIDS and coming out in, in the, the, the whole community had, had not evolved as it has today. Sure. But here's the moral to the story. The interim that was available was the immediate executive director of Planned Parenthood of Boise, Idaho. And this individual happened to be straight. And never in the history of that organization did they ever consider having a straight executive director of an LGBTQ community. And you know what? They hired this individual as their interim. And through that process of everything they learned at Planned Parenthood in a, in a fairly um, a, a unusual community to provide that kind of leadership, they brought to that center. And I can't tell you the accolades, the advancement, the models, the community gilding that straight person was able to provide to the LGBTQ center as an interim. And that was your first one, you're saying? Like, that was our first one. Wow. And imagine all the stories for the other 399 <laughs> plus, because I know there's more in the works. That's right. That's the magic. Wow. You know, it's really, it, it, it makes me think about um, the concept that, you know, good leadership is good leadership and management is management. And really, you know, going into the weeds of what it is your product is or your services, you've got to come back up and look at what the procedures and the processes are to get you through to that next level that you want to to achieve. And so understanding, you know, good, good leadership and management is where it's at. I, I, before we let you go, and we don't have that much more time, but I really want to um, talk about this this conference that's coming up it's such an interesting opportunity for the nonprofit sector to learn more about what's going on with interims share with us this concept this is the first time you're, you're putting this on yes and you know i we use the we because it really is a national community of people mm -hmm. it's not third sector company is trying to be a catalyst Good. And so what, what you're seeing here is the coming together of the first, to the best of my knowledge, standalone, independent gathering of, of self-identified interim leaders across the United States and Canada. And one of my, my greatest memories when I first met Jarrett and she went through the academy is one of the, one of the joys of this job is to really understand and practice what I'll call disruptive innovation. Mm -hmm. 
and it's to be a disruptive inter, uh, uh, a disruptor. And and that really resonated with you, didn't it, Jared? About oh yeah, it. to my core. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. so what this conference is, is we look at the profession through through three lenses around this idea of, you know, really being a, a little bit of a disruptor in an organization's evolution. And we use word disruptor here because it is begging questions that should be answered as people come together to accomplish something in community. That's where that comes from. And that often requires a disruption because there's a lot of assumptions involved. So this conference, Julia, on day one, we really talk about the state of the profession. You know, where, where has um, innovative disruption occurred? And what does that mean? Um, on the second day, we're going to look at just the, the, the practice. What's happened to interim leadership in terms of its disruption and its contributions to the sector. Then we look at, to it as at individual organizational levels. And on the third day, we look at it from the, the profession. I'm really excited about our keynoter. Um, our, our keynoter at the time of the tragic shooting on the Michigan State University campus, these, those students were taken to a hospital that was under the care of an interim president and CEO and medical director. Wow. The world heard from an interim leader of a hospital with all eyes on him at the time those students who were shot on campus were taken. The world was waiting to hear the condition of these students. He's going to be our keynote speaker to talk about being an interim with the entire world's eyes on you and your work. And I can't wait to hear Dr. Denny Martin speak. That gives me chills just yes. as you speak of this and the power, right, of that position. It's just fascinating. Yeah, it really speaks volumes, you know, to, to the profession. So does. But Jared, you're also on the docket. You're, you are one of the 40 people who are shaping this industry at the conference. You're yes, I'm, about I'm really excited. I'm really excited. And I love that you said, you know, there's 40, you know, speakers, 40 people really involved, uh, telling their story, um, helping to shape the industry. I'm thrilled. So on Friday, I will be uh, a panelist talking about branding your practice and getting the job. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, Ingrid is a panelist with me. I cannot think of her last name at, at this time. Kirst, Ingrid Kirst from Lincoln, Nebraska. Perfect. Yeah. So me from Arizona, her from Nebraska, talking about branding your practice as an interim and getting the job. So that's going to be on Friday, Julia. And I'm really excited to play, play a small piece in this big summit. Jeffrey, tell us where your summit uh, or your conference is going to be held. The dates, July 26th through the 28th. Where is it going to be and how can people learn about it? Can you, can you attend uh, virtually or is this all in person? Talk to us about that. Sure. It is a virtual online experience from start to finish. Okay. And it has been adjusted to accommodate all of the six time zones that will be participating from Honolulu all the way to the Atlantic provinces of Canada. Wow. And so, yeah, it's about uh, four hours or such each day. We're also going to have a lot of affinity group discussions. Okay. So you, you, you simply need to go to um, the, what's the website name, Jeffrey? It's the, the national, just go to the, uh, do the interim uh, national summit as a search and it will give you all of the registration information. You certainly can find it by going to www interim executives academy. And that's one of our programs and you'll find it at that website as well. Awesome. Awesome. So, you know, I love that you're doing this virtually because that means that, you know, over a three day period or two, excuse me, two day period, um, there's a lot that people can jump in and jump out of and, or fully commit to that section each day. Mm -hmm. So really exciting, really, really exciting. Um, as we finish up, um, do you think that this conference will be a catalyst for people that want to say, okay, this is how I want to move my um, my career into becoming an interim? Or do you think it's going to be more focused on organizations understanding why they need to embrace this concept? I, is C all of the above fair here? <laughs> you know, yeah. because this is, a, you know, Julia, because this is the first time we're still as professions as professionals and as a profession, 
we're still working on our identity. Sure. You know, for some people, we're, we're a variation on consulting. Some of us don't like that uh, analogy. Um, others are like, you know, I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing. I'm, I, I'm, I'm in, an, in an interim myself. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do in life. One statistic we know is, is that only um, one in eight persons who actually studies interim work actually can find the place that it works best for them in their work-to-life balance. Um, it, is, it is a romantic notion to work you know, in another place for a little while, um, but the economic realities of that and being able to be with and without work and having some downtime um, for a lot of people, that's hard when it really gets into it. So um, this conference will do three things. It will remind us what the profession really is. It will advocate to the sector why you need interims. And most importantly, it will validate that we are a community of professionals, unlike any others that exist in the country right now. Right. You know, I love that you mentioned, you know, for some people really looking at that interim, because when I talk to potential organizations, you know, I say it could be as short as six months, as long as nine, knowing that it still has potential to go beyond that. And what I think we've seen, and I've talked to you, you know, during COVID in the last three years, is really that interim has gone beyond nine months, right? In many cases, it's even gone beyond that 12 months. And something that we've talked about, Julia, on the show over 800 episodes and some including with Jeffrey is really looking at that C-suite retirement, right? Like looking at potentially the founder retiring, the long-term CEO who's been there or COO who's been there, really looking at how can we look at succession planning for the organization across yeah, across the entire organization. And, you know, and that's a big one. And, and Jeffrey, I was a part of an, an interim uh, CEO opportunity and um, what we were, were considering the second founder, right? And so uh -huh. this individual was there for 10 plus years. Yeah. Well, really looking at, you know, the potential of the candidates coming in and the organization offered to two different individuals. And they both declined because their organization did not have a succession plan. And so they would have left their organization in a lurch, right? Because they would have been leaving this organization to take the leadership at another organization and therefore leading, you know, leaving this other one without, without a leader. So cannot wait for the summit, cannot wait to hear from all 40 individuals, 39 plus myself. And <laughs> And really learning more because lifelong leaders, I know the three of us are, and really looking at, you know, how this shapes the sector. So again, for those of you watching and listening, please look at thirdsectorcompany.com. Jeffrey Wilcox joined us today. Again, serves as CEO of the Third Sector Company. Just so grateful to have your time and your expertise with us today. So thank you. My yeah. pleasure. It's been a lot of fun to see this journey. I get to see this journey with Jarrett Ransom every day because of the work she does and what she brings back to the um, nonprofit show. So Jeffrey, it's really been um, an exciting thing to to watch your concept and, and this really special part of our sector grow. Again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I've been joined today by the nonprofit nerd herself, Jarrett R. Ransom. Again, we have amazing sponsors who are with us on this journey called the, the uh, Nonprofit Show. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Hey, Jeffrey, Jarrett, we're going to see you at this amazing summit that's going to kick off many more summits. And we are thrilled that you could be with us today to talk about this. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. Good to see you. you. Yeah. Hey, everybody. As we end every episode of the Nonprofit Show, we, we end with this mantra, and it goes like this. To stay well so you can do well. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Thank you.